Hey guys, how's it going? It's Bean on here. Hope everybody's doing well. We're going to switch it up with a little tutorial video for Baldur's Gate 3. So I've been playing this on my spare time. It's been kind of a guilty pleasure. Um, haven't been doing a Let's Play because I am totally new to D&D. Um, so I didn't want to put you guys through the torture of watching me die and not knowing what I'm doing. So anyways guys, I've gotten to the uh, Shadow Cursed Lands and I came across this boss battle with Isabel and I was having a lot of trouble with it. Um, looked online and there was just stuff about polymorph potions and I just couldn't figure it out. So I ended up doing this method and it helped me be successful without no potions, without any special weapons. So I figured I would share what I did um, to help you guys out if you are struggling. So if this video does help you, please leave a like. And if you like my content, please subscribe to the channel. Would greatly appreciate any support you guys could give. Let's get into the tutorial. Here we go. Okay guys, so what you want to do before you start anything is you want to make sure that all your characters have full health, all their spells recharged, and that you have everything you're going to need. Okay, because once you start that cutscene, there's no going back. So what I did here is I made sure that all the doors in this room were closed. Obviously I left the one with Isabel open because I need to go talk to her to start the fight. But as you can see here, I have a candle holder in front of the small door and in front of the bigger door I have a candle holder as well as numerous chairs. And then I am also moving this candle holder to just kind of put in front of the uh, door here. Now this was just a bit of experimenting. It didn't really do anything. I thought it would just help block out a demon from coming out of this way. Um, but uh, that didn't happen. But again, I would block it just to be safe. And that removable wall that you see to the left of the door, I also moved that across later in the, the tutorial, which I will show you. And what this does is it boxes out all the demons that are going to come with Marcus and allows Isabel to flee and find a safe place in the room. So we're going to go into the next part of the tutorial right now. So in this part of the tutorial, I'm going to be showing you guys the best position to place your characters, which will allow you to have the highest rate of success. Now what you want to do is set your characters up in almost like a triangle slash diamond shape um, in this position of the room. And the reason why it has to be this position is because after the cutscene with Isabel and the dialogue that's going to follow, Isabel and Marcus will kind of spawn right in that area and your goal is to kind of trap Marcus. So like I said before, with locking those doors, the demons that will follow into the inn will not enter the room right away, which gives Isabel a lot of room and a lot of time to run away from Marcus. So Marcus is the, uh, the goal in this. You want to kill him as fast as you can and you want to keep him away from Isabella because, or sorry, Isabel because she doesn't have a lot of hit points. Once she gets into the corner, you can then have my back character, the one with the dreadlocks. That character is going to go and offer support when needed for Isabella if some demons do come in. But the other characters are there as bait for Marcus and the AI tends to go and attack one of those guys because Isabel's a lot farther. And so the AI makes Marcus attack either, you know, Shadowheart or whoever you have equipped. And what this does is allow also your characters to attack him. If he does try to move, he will get that attack going. So like I said before in the other part of the video, with that candle there, you also want to move this wall. Okay, so once you have the dialogue finished with Isabel, you want to make sure that you leave a little crack so that you can go through there and talk to her. But then that also offers a little block for the demons as well. So what I'm going to do in the next part of this tutorial is just kind of show you how it looks with the fight. Um, we'll speed run it a little bit in some parts just to get to the end and then let me know in the comment section below if this actually does help you. Okay, like I said, I'm not using any potions. I'm just using the spells that I have in my weapons and that's about it. So anyways, guys, we're going to hop into the next part of the tutorial and I'll see you there. All right, so now that the fight has started, you guys can see that Marcus has spawned perfectly where I told you he was going to spawn. So as you can see here, I have my characters still in their triangle style position, but because of Isabel being where she is, my character moved a little bit. But you can see now that because both demons are being blocked from the doors being closed and from all the crap in front of them, Isabel was able to run away and get to a 
far part of the room away from Marcus. Now, some of these demons are going to sneak in. It's not foolproof. Sometimes it will take a few turns. Sometimes it will be um, instantly, but it's not going to be both. Okay, as you can see, the other demon is still locked outside, can't get in, and this allows my character to go in, do some damage, and protect Isabel, as well as my other characters, Boxing and Marcus. So the goal for this fight is to make sure that Marcus is the target and that you kill him as fast as you can. You also want to use Shadowheart as a type of support for Isabel, so she has all the healing spells, at least in on my team so what I do is I use her to attack Marcus and then my backup attack will be to go and heal Isabel to make sure that she doesn't fall if she does get knocked out or killed um, the fight does end no matter what so like I said Isabel is who you want to protect Marcus is who you want to attack so we're gonna head into the next part of the tutorial right now and then I can kind of show you later on how things are gonna start looking and how uh, more of these demons can potentially glitch your game but like I said don't worry about the demons worry about Marcus okay so this part of the fight I'm gonna show you the glitch of how the demons eventually make their way and as you can see this one's been locked out for a while he's finally flying through you know the roof and everything and then once it get once it becomes our turn he's in the room with us now this is gonna happen eventually so if it does don't panic like I said before the main thing is to just keep Isabel away from Marcus make sure a character or your main character or whoever um, it doesn't have to be the strongest character just somebody there that's going to attack those demons deal some damage and also just maybe sometimes take some damage from them to avoid them damaging Isabel. And then of course you want to use one of your wizards or Shadowheart or whoever to heal Isabel once in a while. But if you look closely into the circle, you will see that Marcus is still stuck there. Unfortunately, one of my characters is down, but again, if you have Shadowheart or somebody that has reviving capabilities with their spells, that's not an issue. Like I said, the issue is just to make sure Isabel survives. So what I'm gonna do, guys, is I'm gonna fast forward closer to the end um, to this fight, and then you guys can see how it was successful. And again, if this is working for you, please let me know, subscribe to the channel, leave a like, I would greatly appreciate support. It did take me a lot of time to make this video. All right, guys, so now we're nearing the end of the battle. Marcus has about eight health left. As you can see, Isabel is still in that corner. She's still kind of getting attacked by those demons, but they're not doing a lot of damage, and we are making sure that we heal her. So now I'm gonna go in for the final kill for Marcus, and now he is done, which means we have completed our objective. We got 150 XP. Now the rest of your team can go and demolish these demons. If you have the proper spells and you have the um, some bombs or whatever, these guys can be taken out easily. But again, you just wanna make sure that Isabel is not um, dead. So then what I'm gonna do now, guys, is I'm gonna fast forward to the end of the fight, and then you guys can uh, just kind of see the cutscene that's gonna follow. And again, I hope this uh, tutorial did help you. Again, if it did, please leave a like. Isabel, are you all right? I'm fine. <coughs> Marcus has been with us since the start. They've been tracking us this whole time. And that was no random attack. You were the target, Isabel. They know how important you are. But they don't know about you. Kederik will strike again. We need you to strike first. Discover the source of his invulnerability. Make him mortal so we can make him bleed. Good luck. We're in more danger than I knew. If something happens to me, everyone in this inn is dead. Like that.
Why does a man like him do anything? Power, spite, some kind of twisted personal morality. I can understand why he'd want me dead. Without me keeping the curse at bay, everyone in this inn, everyone intent on killing him, is dead too. As for why he'd want to take me alive, I don't know. And I don't want to find out. Now that we have you, I hope I won't have to. No mercy. For Ketherick will have none on you. All right, guys, as you can see, we have successfully saved Isabel from Marcus. There's his corpse that we are looting. Again, if this tutorial does help you, please let me know in the comment section below. I would greatly appreciate it. Also, if it did, please leave a like. And if you liked the video, subscribe to the channel as well. Again, this tutorial um, can be done without any special potions or spells. It's just, again, boxing in Marcus and keeping him away from Isabel as long as possible, making sure that she gets healed. So anyways, guys, again, hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you in the next one. Take it easy.